In this episode of Redefine, we talk with celebrated photographer Jasmine Starr, recently selected as one of the top 10 wedding photographers in the world by American Photo Magazine. We managed to find some time while we were both speaking at WPPIU in Atlanta to discuss running a streamlined business by learning to better say no. Listen in as Jasmine shares how to personalize your brand and the importance of always practicing your craft. You're watching Redefine with Tamara Lackey, presented by Adorama TV. Hi, Jasmine. Hi, Tamara. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You thank have you. been in the middle of a whirlwind. Yes. A but whirlwind that's been going on. I know, <laughs> it's like the never-ending whirlwind. I know. No, but it's good, I'm thankful. I wouldn't want it any other way. Yeah, I hear you. Tell me, um, looking at your career, what would you say is something that you have strived most for? and are still striving for? I think that's the operative word. It's still striving. It's like the thing that I felt like I struggled with when I first started my business, finding a balance between having a life and having a business. Yes. And then a couple things happened to where it radically revolutionized the way that I approach it. It's I want my business to serve me. I don't want to serve my business. Mm -hmm. And so making the decisions that will enable me to make decisions that will help me to get freedom in my life and to do things that I want. And so what I'm actively striving for now is finding a balance between having a life, having a business, and being happy with that medium that it provides. So the big focus is, I want to do stuff I love. Yes. I want to not be completely clinically insane. Yes. <laughs> and I want to figure out what the, what the tasks are involved with ensuring that there's a middle ground there that Absolutely. keeps me sane and also producing. Yes. And not giving up. Yes. Right. And how are you finding that? <laughs> <laughs> and the operative word is finding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still finding. Um, I'm making just very, um, oh, I run a very streamlined business. And so I, I monitor what my fixed costs are. Mm -hmm. And then anything that fluctuates beyond that is I'm making a conscious decision with both my business partner and husband and saying, is this going to move us forward? If it does not move us forward, then we completely omit it. It's about running a streamlined business and having a streamlined life. Yeah. So we live simply, but it's with the intention of if we can live simply, we can find like, happiness in simplicity so interesting so you do feel like you're saying no more often in in more of a confident way than you used to yes yes isn't that nice it's so nice <laughs> like the, the ability to have choice is freedom yeah and the minute you can get to a point into where you're in your career where you're no longer dependent on saying i need this shoot i need this wedding yeah. because at the end of the day i'm not making decisions based on need or want i'm making making decisions on is it right for us where yes. we are and that just makes me happy and i think it's where we should be yeah and when did you find that you were able to get more where, where was that tipping point for you in your career um well it's 2011 and I think that that tipping point began around 2009 and then in 2010 it got to a point to where there was like negative feedback, criticism and I had to take a stance. Do I listen to what other people are saying? Do I have an, have an impact on how I run my business or do I just run my business? And all of a sudden it forced me to make really concrete um, decisions about how I run my business and not care about what anybody else says or does and that's how it's kind of like manifested itself now. Yeah, and let's talk about that a little bit because I found, I mean, I just did, you know, we've both done Creative Live. Yes. The insanity of Creative yes. Live. Um, you know we're crazy, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Start recording me live for everything I do and mess up on now. Right. See, and I already, I already told, I already told you that you we can edit stuff out. Yeah. Of this one, Creative Live, it's like, there's certain times where I'm talking and I'm like, oh God, no, yeah, That just back. came out of my mouth. Come back. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I found myself saying a lot, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, but I made the analogy recently that it feels like this the photography industry is like this playground where most people are just doing their best and they're jumping around and they're playing and they're on the swings and they're going down the slide and then there's like a, a few school bullies mm -hmm. <laughs> that are over like Ooh, you know yeah. and, and 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 the weight that the threat of them carry like it comes out in waves across the whole playground Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, very interesting because a lot of people will look that direction, um, have the intention or have the excitement or have the passion, and then dim it, them, their own selves. Oh. They'll dim that um, out of fear of that, that of retribution that may right. come through a, a blog post comment or a Facebook comment or right. you know, something said on Twitter that's nasty and they're at mentioned. Right. Um, that becomes a little too overwhelming and then they back off and they don't show who they are and what they have to offer. Um, and you seem to have, what, what strikes me about uh, your mindset is you've looked at that, you've experienced that, and you have decided what? To not care. To not care. To, to, to say, I don't care, or you genuinely, like, I don't even have a feeling. Like, I mean, because there's a distinction, right? There is. Yeah. There is, there is a feeling. 
but it's kind of just it's gotten to a point where I, like I don't give a rip anymore because I can talk about it with both from both perspectives where I, I talking about it distinctly as a point of experiencing it and having it affect me to such a point to where I was sad about it and yeah. it affected me and I didn't want to get out of bed in the morning and then at the end of the day and this was in 2010 2010 was the latter part of 2010 was a really hard year for me and I look back to that and I never want to become that person again I never want to experience the ramifications of um, a stranger's wrath a stranger's ambiguity and a stranger's accusations online I've now protected my heart and my mind in my soul literally from saying you can't hurt me because I'm not letting you hurt me and I think that that distinction has come and with that power has come from that because I don't care anymore I genuinely talk all you want about me and if you do talk about me spell my name right and give me a link <laughs> I don't care I'll take it however it comes like you know keep on talking yeah. like the minute you stop talking about me is when I'm gonna get worried so hate on watch me fly Given the evolution of your business, where you came from, how you got started, um, how you were able to kind of move forward based more on the study of confidence or the art of confidence, art of confidence. the art of confidence, yeah. which I love, um, the three pieces of advice you'd offer to anybody who, regardless of what they do, want to either stand out or maintain a structure that is streamlined, a business that makes sense for them, that allows them a launch point. Um, I think the first piece of advice, which is something that my best friends and I ardently hold it to, yeah. and it sounds silly, but it's K-I-R, keep it real. Okay. So anytime that you're in a situation, it's like K-I-R, Tamara, K-I-R, keep it real. Like be, with, be real with yourself, be real with your loved ones, and be real with your clients. I would rather have somebody not like me for me being 100% of who I am instead of a carbon copy of somebody I think I'm supposed to be. Right. So in dealings with business, personal life, and um, anything beyond that, I'm 100% real. Okay. That's a piece of advice. Yes. Second piece of advice would be to personalize every aspect of what you can of your business online. It's no longer enough to have a really great website or a really great blog and a really great Twitter handle. Everybody has them. So how then can you be become differentiated within that market? Right. And I believe that point of differentiation isn't getting a nicer camera or getting a nicer lens. It's being you and mm -hmm. being able to reveal yourself online in a much different way than other people traditionally have in the past. Yes. The third piece of advice would be to continue to practice because I feel like I've been doing this now five years and you know if I was being honest right here today I kind of feel like I'm in a photographic funk mm -hmm. like be honest by the way that's good I am well yeah I am <laughs> I'm like be honest K-I-R keep it real yeah uh, Tamara is like I kind of feel like at times and perhaps it's because I'm getting towards the end of the season I just feel like I can compare myself to other people's work Am I as good? Can I do what they do? Am I given the same opportunities? And if I constantly look within that frame, I will always be less than. But if I could change the equation and say, I might not be where they are, mm -hmm. but I like where I'm going, yeah. and hopefully I could get there. And that changes to- And like these small, these small celebrations that, that lead back absolutely. to- Absolutely, to saying like, and again, going through and saying, this is what I need to work on. And if I can go to a wedding and achieve precisely what I wanted to, am I as good as I want to be? No, but am I making small strides to get there? then I'm happy. Yeah. That makes me happy. I like that. I read a statistic that there are 1% of people who create art and 9% of people who curate the art and 90% of people consume the art. Huh. I happen to be, we happen to be in that 10% of creating and curating our own art. Yeah. And I feel like it's so important for us to be able to leverage that and use that smartly as what we do. And it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of sacrifice. So I got a text message from a photographer here who's at the conference. Mm -hmm. He said, hey, meet us out for dinner and drinks. And did I want to go out for dinner and drinks? Absolutely. But did I know that I had to wake up the next morning and give a presentation? Right. I did. Right. And so if you are a creator and if you are a curator, it takes a lot of sacrifice. And part of that sacrifice is not doing the things that you want to do in order to benefit a larger group of people. So if that's one thing that people can take away with is sacrifice now, but the benefits that will come as a byproduct of that are far superior than enjoying, you know, a cocktail at right. 10. Right. <laughs> you can do it at 10 a.m. the next morning when you're done talking. Okay. There's been most, are you saying there's a mimosa waiting for me? I think that's what you're saying. Yes. That's the post redefined show present. There's a mimosa. Woo! Okay. <laughs> well, good. All right. I know you have a plane to catch. I do. I'm flying Thank home. you so much for taking Thank the time. You. Thank and you. I look forward to seeing you again in a few weeks. Absolutely. New York. All right. Take Thank care. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed that interview. At Redefine, we love great conversations. We also love great gadgets and gear, especially ones that make us look good. One of the things we love is the Color Monkey Monitor Calibrator. 
It's so easy to use, even a human can handle it. Don't be afraid of color calibrating anything. Just pop in the disc, plug in the color monkey, and let it run. Your photographs will print in true color and your videos will be even easier to color correct. Stop fiddling around with settings and let Color Monkey do all the work. You can grab Color Monkey at Adorama.com. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.